Welcome back to the final part of the show where we have a chance to sift through all the press releases that are sent our way and choose the most interesting ones to share with you. I have recently had, it has to be admitted, a bit of a moan about all the brand collaborations that seem to have been happening recently and I've had a lot of messages agreeing with me and some that don't. All I would say is that you shouldn't take these rants of mine too seriously. I love bikes but I also love a bit of truth and honesty and if I feel something is a bit naff then I'm going to say so. A lot of motorcycle journalism and influencing these days is unfortunately far too obsequious and fawning, but at least with us, you know that if we like a bike, then we really, really like it. On which note, here's a new model that we definitely like the look of, but couldn't ever justify for ourselves because, well, mainly because we couldn't afford it, but also because we couldn't ever hope to do its brilliance any justice whatsoever. But that's no reason not to lust after something though, is it? Uh, I mean, I could never drive the latest Ferrari or Lamborghini anywhere near its limits, but I wouldn't say no to having one in the garage. And the same goes for the ultimate incarnation of Ducati's Panigale V4, the SP2. You'll remember that the base Panigale V4 received a fairly serious update for 2022 with a reworked front end for improved feel and a redesigned tank and seat. The SP2 obviously gets those as well, but then adds plenty of desirable extras like a dry clutch, carbon fibre wheels, a remote front brake adjuster, single seat unit, rear sets, assorted carbon bits and pieces, and a colour scheme that, apart from the shiny alley fuel tank, is effectively a replica of Ducati's winter testing livery. The electronic suspension and engine remain as they are with the V4S, which is no bad thing. Fit the Akrapovic race exhaust that is delivered with the SB2 and you'll have an almost incomprehensible 225 horsepower at your disposal. All of this road legal track day loveliness is yours for about 650,000 rand. Yes, it's a lot of money, but next to the 800,000 or so that uh, Brabus wants for its German KTM Super Duke impersonation, you'd have to say it's a full on bargain. Let us now move on to another new model that has been announced in a very under the radar, borderline amateurish kind of way. Buell is on the comeback trail and we've mentioned in our news segments over the past year or so the rebirth of the American sporting mark. When the brand died for a second time after initially being put to the sword by Harley Davidson, the detritus of the failed enterprise was bought up with an eye to bringing it back to life for a third time. Some pretty ropey and not very confident inspiring social media posts didn't fill us with any genuine hope, but the old 1190RX Superbike was eventually reborn in pretty much the exact guise in which it had died, and it's now called the 1190 Hammerhead. It's a 185 horsepower V-twin that looks and probably goes the same as it always did, and that's not too much of a disastrous thing but we haven't seen or ridden one, so we don't know how well it's been screwed together. The bike is built in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and it started production in November of last year. It is worth, I think, pointing out that Eric Buell is not involved with this rebirth in any way. The new Buell also promised us touring, cruiser and off-road adventure type models to go with the Hammerhead and this latest announcement concerns a sport touring version that in its design drawings actually look like an adventure model with knobbly tyres and yet here it is. All we have are a couple of dodgy pictures from a social media post from Daytona Bike Week. You'd think that with such an important event and groundbreaking announcement there would have been something more of a grand reveal, a serious effort made to market this next big part of the Buell rebirth. But if you take a closer look, then maybe you'll understand why they didn't bother. I mean, is it just me or is that really the ugliest, saddest, laziest attempt at a sport touring bike that you've ever seen from what we're supposed to regard as a proper manufacturer? I wouldn't even give it a break if it came from the poorest backstreet chop shop because I know any specialist bike builder would do a much, much more convincing job than this. We appear to be looking at what was a Buell SX, the naked version of what they now call the Hammerhead, but it now has had twin headlights housed in, well, in what? A disgusting 
half finished metal box mounted to the front along with a light bar and a near vertical and ridiculously tall windscreen that has all the aerodynamic properties of a sail. This thing has not been near a wind tunnel, has it? The Buell Super Touring 1190 will retail for about 350,000 Rand and will apparently be available towards the end of this year as the world's fastest touring bike. Yes, that's what they're saying because it has the same 185 horsepower V-twin that's in the Hammerhead. But I think Kawasaki's supercharged 197 horsepower H2 SX might have something to say about that. Maybe Kawasaki will admit defeat and put one of those screens on its bike and follow Buell's innovative technical lead. Or maybe not. More interestingly, but more scarily as well, was Buell's simultaneous debut of the DR, which is the world's most powerful dirt bike and almost certainly its heaviest. DR stands for Dune Racer and the model is based on the bike that won the American Hill Climbing Championship. Once again, we're looking at the power coming from the same 1190 V-Twin, but detuned to 175 horsepower this time. And there's a reworked chassis for obvious reasons. Again, price is going to be in the 300 grand bracket. This looks mad, a real nut jobs bike. And if you happen to live near some dunes or a beach, it could be the ultimate toy. It could also be the quickest and most expensive way to an intensive care bed, but that won't bother some. Right, moving on from the disturbing developments at Buell, let us consider technology that we're used to in games that appears to be making its way into the real world. A Swiss firm called Aegis Rider has been developing technology for augmented reality that will basically do what computer driving games do for you by showing you the best line through a corner. If this technology can do it as well as the games do it, I'd suggest you leave well alone because even in the totally made up world of computer gaming, it's, it's pretty rubbish. Sounds like a nice idea in theory, but in reality is more likely a recipe for disaster. A perfect line through a corner has got a lot more to do with trigonometry calculations. And until technology can see and adjust the line according to potholes or damp patches or gravel or pedestrians stood at the side of the road, or maybe take into account a blustery wind or the sound of an oncoming HGV truck on the other side of a blind hairpin that you're about to enter. I'd leave well alone. And with that dose of really real reality, we'll have to call it for this week's show. We hope you'll join us again next week when we will be doing the usual riding, ranting, and revealing all the latest in the world of bikes. See you then. <laughs>